Here we are. We're alive. We made it. Another day. We're alive in this moment right now. Today, we woke up with and we opened our eyes if we have them. And, and we're here. And, and you have ears. You're listening to this. And if you're not, you're reading those subtitles. This is exciting. This is good. This is really, really good. This is really, really good. This is good. This is good. Today is a good day. Today is a good day because I motherfucking decided it would be. I decided it would be. (laughs) Okay. And this is like some of the tools that I've learned in my recovery and just, you know, fucking cliche 30 something woman bullshit. All right. We're all about self-help. We're all about, you know, let me find the tools to, to be happier and more fulfilled in my life. That's what your thirties is about. I I suppose my mid, I started that journey in my mid twenties, but my mid thirties, man, I'm deep into that. Oh yeah. Give me a good book, a good inspirational book, a nice guided meditation. Oh, please. Brene Brown. Yes. Ah, (laughs) okay. Anyway. So today I went, I just left my uh, women's meeting that I told you about the one where all the women are between 60 and 80. They've all got long-term sobriety. And the topic for this morning's meeting was meditation and how these women incorporate meditation. And a lot of them, you know, are just like, I go on a walk or I cook and I'm totally present while I cook. And that's how I meditate. And other people like have incense going and, you know, sitting cross-legged, which is what I did this morning. I, it was five minutes. Okay. Alfie went off to school. Poppy was still sleeping. So I was like, okay, I've got five minutes. I went in my closet, sat on my yoga mat, lit an incense. And I did like a five minute guided meditation from YouTube. I literally just YouTubed five minute morning meditation. The first one that popped up, boom. And in it, there were affirmations on being grateful that you woke up this morning. And okay, all of a sudden now I'm grateful that, that I woke up this morning. Um, and then just doing deep breathing, man, I swear to God, there's something so powerful about doing deep breathing. I, yo, if you're like, shut up. No, no, I'm not going to, because have you ever taken Molly? Okay. Have you? Okay. If you haven't, mm, I'm not telling you to, okay. But I'm not telling you not to look it basically, I think it like increases your serotonin level. So you just feel like so happy about everything. Like this apple would just make you cry from happiness. Like everything feels good, but the calm down's really bad and it's really bad for you. And it, and now I think it's super dangerous to take street drugs because like everything has fentanyl in it. Like seriously, I just keep hearing about overdoses. I mean, it's, it's really not safe to take street drugs at this point. I I suppose it never really was, but now, especially it's not. Anyway, my point is pranayama, deep breathing. Yo, sometimes I'll do it and I'll straight up feel like I just took a hit of pure MDMA. I'm not kidding. Okay. Just try it with me. Ready? Inhale deep through your nose for a count of let's do five. Okay. You can do it. Just inhale deep all the way through your nose, fill up your belly, fill up your lungs for a count of five, and then hold it at the top. Here's the key. Hold it at the top for another five. You think, oh no, I need to breathe out. No, you don't. You can do this. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Inhale deep for a count through your nose for one, two, three, four, five. Now hold at the top. Hold at the top. Take one more deep breath in. Hold at the top for five, four, three, two, one. And then exhale everything through your mouth. (sighs) Now hold at the bottom for five, four, three, two, one. (sighs) And you just repeat that. So anyway, I'll do that. And if you do it over and over, even just for a couple minutes, even just for one minute, I get like tinglies all over my body and my stress sort of dissolves. And I I start understanding that, wait, hold on. Maybe we're not meant to live in this perpetual state of fear and anxiety. And maybe just maybe our natural state is bliss. And maybe just maybe if we could stay in this moment in time and just stay present and breathe deep and connect to our bodies, maybe we could have a peaceful exhilarating existence. I know not always, but maybe more of the time we can. Um, and that's what meditation does for me. It connects me to 
source it can, to source energy. It connects me to the beauty and the miraculous nature of just being alive of this universe of existence. I, yo, okay. Couple minutes a day, man. You'll be tingling in your little fingies. Oh, 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 it's amazing. Fingies. I'm going to call them fingies from now on. I am on my fifth cup of coffee. I should mention that. I'm on my fifth cup. It's not actually a coffee. It's a cappuccino with unsweetened almond milk. Very different. It's just one or two shots. Okay, two per cappuccino. I've been up since 6.30. It's about five minutes to noon right now. And this will be my last cup. Okay. Don't judge me. But anyway, so the whole topic was on meditation and I find that to be honest with you, my morning routine when the kids allow, right, has been honestly saving my ass through this entire situation because what it does is it centers me and then I, I, after I do some deep breathing, I start affirming what I want. And again, this is some cheesy, chuggy millennial bullshit. And I don't care, man. I don't care. I say to myself with my hands, arms in the air like this, and I go, I am strong. I am powerful. I am enough exactly as I am. I am beautiful. I am sexy. I am powerful. I am so happy and grateful that I'm walking through life in love. I am so happy and grateful that my kids are healthy and happy and I am a great mom and I allow them to feel safe and nurtured and loved and cared for unconditionally. I am so happy and grateful that my life is working out better than I could have ever imagined. I am so happy and grateful that my life is working out better than I could have ever imagined. And I just start affirming these things. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm using my gifts to help better the world in in whatever way, whatever your gifts are, that I'm able to use those gifts to, to help. And then I ask the universe, what can I give today? Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? Direct me, guide me that kind of stuff. It's so helpful to just take that time. And then sometimes I don't have that time, but I do have time for a walk around the block and I can, whether I take the kids or not, depending on if Carla or Nanny is here or not, I go regardless with the kids or without, but moving my body is like the best, um, the best, 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 what's it called, um, solution for anxiety. Cause it just, it just gets you out of your head. It's so funny. Dr. Amen told me, he's like, walk like you're in a hurry, but then that stresses me out. Cause I'm walking like, Oh God, I'm going to be late for this imaginary hurry that I'm in. Anyway, walking, getting grateful, making that list of everything I'm grateful for big and small is just so big. And, and this is coming from someone who I, when I was younger, used to write in a journal, like, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Like, I would write down, why am I the way that I am? You know, just very negative, um, victim, um, wah, wah, wah. I mean, it was real pain, yeah, but... I have zero interest in being a victim in my life today. Zero. Um, It's not fun. There's nothing to do about it. Uh, Whereas if I'm able to find my part in the situation, however small, even if that's just like holding on to it and let go and become willing to forgive everything and everyone. And this is just for me. I know a lot of people think you don't have to forgive and that's good for you. If you don't think that that's good for you, if it's whatever works for you. But for me, it's, it's really freeing to take responsibility. Um, anyway, I'm fucking rambling. I had zero idea what this, what this podcast was going to be. Um, okay. Here's another topic I wanted to, to dive into a little, and that is, um, my insane situation right now. I, 
am able to handle it because I'm surrounding myself with women and uh, strong uh, women who have a, a good design for living that I can sort of watch and emulate what they're doing. And I, I'm also leaning on friends and family and my sponsor, and I'm doing a lot of writing and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm handling it all fine, but the added layer of insanity is the fact that like, it's all public, um, for me. And it's been a real trip navigating. Cause it's not just like, you know, I'm separated and that that's a big deal and all the things that went with it. It's not just that it's that it's all out there. And that's been a really, um, challenging thing for me to navigate. Now, I don't think it's all bad. And also coming back to practicing radical acceptance, it is what it is. It's out there. It happened. So I can accept it and dare I say, even embrace it, or I could fight it and go like, why did you have to post it to the world? I wasn't ready to talk about it. Blah, 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 blah. And I could, I could do that. And I could be in resistance with what is, which is what I believe is the root cause of our suffering or one of the root causes of our suffering is being in resistance with what is. And what is, is that it, our situation was publicized, you know, and, and continues to be. And so I'm trying my best to accept the situation and go, okay, it's out there. So then I will talk about it. It's out there. It's again, it's all perspective. So by talking about it, I suppose it takes the shame away from it. It happens all the time. People separate, they divorce, they, all this stuff happens all the time. And you don't really, I guess, get to see it up close. Well, now you do. Now you do. Um, so I, I agreed. Stephen had suggested that we do each other's podcasts. And at first I was like, uh, and then I was like, yeah, okay, why not? I mean, we are getting along well most of the time. We still have our stuff. Don't get me wrong. But I would say most of the time we're getting along very well. It's all out there. Why not? You know, I still love him very much. He, we're parenting our, our children. You know, I, I couldn't really see a downside. So, so yeah, I agreed and we did it and it was fun. I had, I had a lot of fun. We laughed a lot and we talked and, and I had no idea what, what I was going to say. So I probably said some dumb shit. And that's, that's the thing when you don't script or, you know, um, plan anything in advance. Uh, but I have to say, I, I'm, I'm getting really good at not reading comments, but then sometimes I do, cause I want to read your lovely comments and I want to read your experience. And when you reach, you know, write your experience, strength and hope, I want to read that. And I like reading what you have to say, but then of course that comes with the risk of reading some nasty negative comments. And and so that's kind of what happened is I, I posted the, the podcast episode with Steven and just, I'm just getting these women and it's women too, other than the bull crap guy, the guy who said, I bet you ran your husband off with your bull crap. I bet you ran your husband right off with your bull crap, bull crap, bull crap. Um, besides bullcrap, dude, it's been primarily women who leave me like really nasty comments and say like, Steven, you deserve so much better. And she, whatever, just really horrible shit, you know, and they get it wrong and they don't know the full situation. And it's like, there's this part of me that wants to be like, you don't understand what I went through because of did it. No, it's not really, I don't want to get into details. I don't want to do that. Um, so I just need to know that karma is my boyfriend. Karma is a god. Karma is my bree the breeze in my hair on the weekend. Karma's a relaxing thought. <laughs> 
anyway, I've been, that's Taylor Swift. If y'all don't know, been listening to the karma song. No, I don't, I don't need to think about that, but I do need to know that I have kept my side of the street clean and I feel like I'm acting from a place of love and integrity and doing what's best for me and for the kids. And that's it. I can't listen to the negativity, but it does hurt. And so I I just, I'm conflicted about that. And then it was funny because I met with my business manager yesterday and I was like, Hey, what do you think about me taking some time off? you know, just getting away from the spotlight a little bit. Wouldn't that be cool? And she was like, no, Laura, you need to keep working. And I was like, yeah, but, or I could go to not work and do not, not working. No, not. And she's like, "Mm, no, you, you need to keep, keep plugging along. Okay. You've got bills to pay. You need to. (laughs) Yeah, but, (laughs) but I don't want to. Um, and it's not that I don't want to, it's just like, there are, there are, I do love what I do, but there are times that it just gets really, really overwhelming because this stuff is so personal and yeah, it's, I'm trying my best to just, to, to just accept the reality that it's out there and just be okay with it because why, what is the other option to resist the reality of what is? And that's very painful. The path of least resistance would be to accept and embrace the situation as it is. So he made the decision to publicize it. So, okay, here we are. And, and what's done is done. And, and so I'm, I'm have to continuously throughout the day, practice surrendering and accepting my life exactly as it is. And everyone's going to come with their, with their comments. And part of me wants to, you know, individually respond to, you know, and, and they're like every little thing that I say, they're like, how dare she, the way she talked to him here, or like, how dare she say this one thing to him or just attacking me. And it just hurts. It hurts, especially coming from women. Cause, cause one would think that a woman has another woman's back but you've got these fucking pick me bitches. Oh, sorry. You've got these pick me girls who are just like bowing down to whatever Steven is putting out there. And then whatever I say, they're like shitting on. And it's like, okay, girl, you do that. You go ahead and do that. And it like, it, it does, it gets under my skin. Cause I'm like, you don't know, you don't know what I went through. How dare she, you know, punish him for, being suicidal. That is not what happened. That is so far from what happened, you know, but, but I'm not going to get into it all. I'm not going to do that. I've got to be the bigger person, (laughs) which is really, really hard and just ignore or block the pick me girls. I've got to do that. And they think they know, and they don't know, but it's, it's not their fault in the end because he, and now me is putting some of this out there So they do think they know because they do know some, but really they know the narrative of, you know, Steven and what he's putting out there every single day, every single day. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's a fucking wild situation. I call my mom. I'm like, mom, what is happening? What is this life? She's like, four of my friends called Barb, Jan, Missy, and Kathy all called. They asked if you were getting back together from the latest video. What? You know, this is the world we're living in right now. Barb is calling my motherfucking mom at 9 a.m., you know, because of a video that she saw. Um... It's wild. So here we go. Surrendering. Whatever you're going through in your life, can you surrender it? Can you get into acceptance in this moment of exactly the way your life is? And sure, that it, it's not, that's not being a doormat. It's then, you know, getting an acceptance. This is where I'm at right now. I cannot change it. And then having the courage to change the things you can. And so that's what we're doing right now. So I'm taking really hard steps and I'm meeting my sponsor every single week and trying to get clarity around this situation. So 
So I guess that's kind of it. It's 20 minutes. I want to keep these short because I know you got shit to do. I've got to go pick up Alfie from school. The boy loves school. He loves it. And that's very exciting for me. Although yesterday he woke, he wakes me up every morning at like 6.30 or 7. I literally wake up with his face right next to my face and he's just staring at me and he goes, baby in the party. And I'm like, okay, yeah, go pee pee in the potty. He's like, mommy, come with. I'm like, honey, you can go pee pee in the potty. Like all day he goes to the potty by himself, shuts the door, does his business. But for some reason, that first morning pee, I got to be right there standing outside like a creep. Pee pee in the potty. Go pee pee. Yes, go. Mama, come. Mama, come with. Okay, fine. So I crawl out of bed and I just stand outside the bathroom door like a big ass creep while he pees. And then bubble bath. <laughs> okay, sure. It's pee and bubble bath. That is the morning routine. And then off to play school he goes. And he loves it. But I gotta go pick him up. I love you so much. Let me know in the comments below um, if you found anything in this uh, podcast helpful or um, just share your experience with me in, in whatever way. Just comment something. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you hit that like button hit that like button and, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. Okay. We're posting videos every single week. So hit that, post that, hit that like button, subscribe button. Okay. Um, and then also comment and you know, if you're listening, you can just follow me on Spotify or wherever you listen and you know, look, we're going to get through this deep breaths, right? Inhale through your nose, hold it, hold it, hold it. Exhale. Ha inhale, courage, exhale, fear, get present. And accept the reality of what is. And man, we'll be a lot happier. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. We're going to be a lot happier when we do that. And that's a fact. Oh, that is a fact right there. If you just accept reality, it's exactly as it is. And trust and affirm that your life, your life will be better and is better than you could have ever imagined and will continue to get better than you could have ever imagined. Why not that? Why not do constructive imagination? Why visualize worst case when you could visualize best case? That's what I'm saying. All right. Love y'all until next week. Okay. Bye. Have a great day and get, what are you grateful for? I know that you're grateful for something. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm.